Hello guys, welcome to Algorithm Made Easy. My name is Rajat and today we will be discussing the question House Robber Part 2. This question is a extension to the previous problem that we have already solved, House Robber. So if you haven't done that question or haven't watched the video, do watch it. The link is at the top and the description below. We will be using a lot of explanation from that particular solution in this question as well. The basic difference between the two problems is in this problem, the street of the houses is not in a straight line, it is in a circular fashion. That means the first house and the last house is connected. So let's see how that does make a difference and what changes do we need to make in order to come up with a new solution. So we use this particular example in the first part wherein we came up with a solution to find out the maximum of 10 plus 9 and not peck. But in this problem, we know that 9 is connected to 1. The last house is connected to the first house. That means if we are taking into consideration that we will be robbing the last house, we cannot rob the first house and vice versa. This clearly shows that if we are robbing the first house, then we can compute the result till the second last house. That is 1 in this particular case. Because we are sure that if we are starting from the first house, we cannot reach till the end of the house. Remember, we are finding out the maximum between two values. First, when we are robbing this particular house and second, when we are not robbing the particular house. But since we are sure that we cannot at all rob the ninth house, we need to compute the result till the second last house. So what about this last house? This needs to be taken into consideration if we are sure that we will be robbing the last house then we will be starting from the second house not the first house because in that case we are sure that we cannot rob the first house. So if we are given these particular set of houses wherein the first house is connected to the last house we can find out the maximum sum that we can make from the first house till the second last house and from the second house till the last house. The maximum of the two values now becomes the answer that we can make from these set of houses which are in circle. So now I'll recommend you to code this particular approach using the explanation that we discussed just now. And if you face any issue, you can always come back to the video. Now it's time to code this particular approach. Since we are using the same logic as house robber part one, We'll copy paste the same code over here and then just see what changes do we need to make in order to make this code work. So I'll just copy this code and paste it here. Now, the base conditions will still remain the same because if they are in circle and if there is only one house, then we simply return the nums of zero. If there are two values, then no matter if they are in circle or straight line, we will return the maximum of the two values. Now let's apply the logic that we discussed. We know that we need to first compute our result from 0th index till n minus 2 index. And then we need to compute the result from first index to n minus 1 index. So if we see that over here we are starting from 0 going all the way till nums length that means n minus 1 but we need to go till n minus 2 in this case so we make it n minus 1. The dp array that we have created over here will also not contain nums.length, it will be of length n minus 1 in this case. So this becomes our answer for this 0th index to n minus 2 index. Now it's time to find out the answer for first index till n minus 1 index. So we need to again make a new dp array. Let's call it dp1. Now we will simply copy the base conditions, make it dp1, make the changes because we are starting from index 1 this becomes index 2 and lastly we loop on the rest of the values by using this for loop which will now be starting with index 3 going all the way till nums.length as the length of this dp array is nums.length updating all the dp to dp1 now both these array will contain the sum the first containing the sum from 0th index to n minus 2 index and dp1 containing sum from first index to n minus 1 index. We need to just find out what is the maximum of the two sums and that will become the sum for this initial array. 
So we'll just find out the max of the two. The maximum value will lie at the last index. So we'll put that. Now let's try to run this code. So it ran successfully. Let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. The time complexity in this case is O of n and also the space complexity because we are iterating over the initial array two times and we are using a DP array to store the intermediate results. Now instead of writing these codes two times, we can just simply create a function out of it. So when you're done with it, the code will look like this. We are going from zero to nums at length minus one, where start is inclusive, not the end. And we are going from the first index till the nums dot length. It is much more clean with no boilerplate code. So let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully with the same time and space complexity. I hope this video helped you. Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.